Well, hello, everybody. I'm Hal. And I'm Melanie. And we want to welcome you to another episode of Making Biblical Family Life Practical. We are coming from the beautiful mountains of Western North Carolina this week. We're at Ridgecrest Conference Center, where we are at um, a homeschool leaders retreat sponsored by HSLDA. Mm -hmm. And we're having a good time meeting our old friends. Yeah, Hal and I served in homeschool leadership in North Carolina for years and years. Uh, yes, quite a few years, um, many and starting many years ago. And so yes. we have known some of these people for, I'll go ahead and say it. I think we've known some of these people for 20 years and longer. 22 years. And it's, so it's, it's a bit of a family reunion. Well, as well actually, as a, I realized how we saw one of the families that we knew back when we lived in Louisiana when we had little kids and we have actually known them, I think like 30 years, maybe 31 years. Wow. That's We're, remarkable. We got old. Uh, you're only as old as you feel. Okay, right. That's what they say. Anyway. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> anyway, we're having a good time here, good fellowship, and a good renewal time, good connections, too, because a lot of these people are the folks that we speak for during the conference season. So that's always good as well. But today, uh, you know, we're talking about relationships, the relationships we have with these other homeschool families that we've known forever. Hmm. But there's a relationship that's more important. We need to have strong relationships with our kids because hear me on this when your kids leave home relationship is all you'll have now now think about that for just a minute because that, that really let that sink in because once they leave our homes there's really nothing to call them back except their love for us or yes. their sense of duty to the family or some, right. there's something in their family relationship that calls them back to home whether it's a sense of responsibility or joy and anticipation, whatever it is. And if there's not a good relationship, if, the, if you don't have a good relationship with you, with them, mm -hmm. then they can walk out the door and never come back. And we've known some who did. We really have. And so this is really important. You know, I think probably the two most important parts of parenting are mm -hmm. discipleship and relationship. And if you miss either one of those, you're in for a lot of heartbreak. And in fact, um, you know, experience tells us that without the relationship, the discipleship is not going to go very far. It doesn't. Even though the discipleship has that eternal impetus to it, yet it was really only effective within the context of relationship. That's right. And so today we want to talk about developing relationship with your kids. How, what can you do to build the kind of relationship that when they leave home, they call home. When they leave home, they come back. Hmm that they are desiring to spend time with you and with the family because that's, you know, that's what we want. At the same time, building a relationship with them and God, you know, do you remember how a few years ago we saw a presentation of some research where they had looked, they talked to like 10,000, mm -hmm. almost 10,000 kids who were raised in Christian homes who were now adults. Right. And they were, they, they were looking at what factors predicted that a child raised in a Christian home would um, stay in the faith as an adult. And, and that's not to say that, that it caused it, but no, it was, God but it was, causes it. But there was a <laughs> correlation. You, if where you found one, you generally found the other to be yes. true as well. And that was an interesting thing. They found that of those who were raised in the faith and yet stayed in the faith once they, uh, once they made their own decisions about it, those young people, those young adults were found that they had a strong relationship with a Christian parent. That was the biggest predictor. Father or mother. It, did, it wasn't one yeah. or the other in particular. But, but that, that was the biggest predictor. They have a good relationship with a Christian mom or a Christian dad or even another predictor or a Christian grandparent. Mm -hmm. And so that really kind of set me on fire for thinking about relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, what does it mean to have a good relationship with your child? How do you build it? What does that look like at different ages? And so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about building a good relationship with your children when they're little, all the way to when they're grown up. Mm -hmm. And how can you do that for your sake so that you'll have your kids in your lives the rest of your lives, but also for the sake of the gospel? Because God is so often pleased to use relationship and bringing people to to himself. Well, you know, the fundamental thing in a healthy relationship is trust. Yeah. 
And, and that's something that you teach from the time that baby first draws breath. Well, that that's the very first foundation is mm -hmm. you can trust me. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to see that you get what you need. I'm going to be there when you cry. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to meet your needs. And that starts even in babyhood. That's something you can do even if your kids are less than a year old is you can work on meeting their needs and being trustworthy. And that's something that if you mm -hmm. adopt a child, that's one of the first battles is showing them that you can be trusted because kids who have been through trauma have a really hard time trusting. And it's interesting that in the scripture that God often uses the, uh, uses the example or, or the, the image, if you will, the illustration of the trust of a nursing child. Yes. You know, the trust, the comfort that a nursing child has in the arms of his mother. He even uses that to describe his relationship with us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that utter trust that all my nourishment comes from you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really cool. And I love the fact that taking care of my babies was the beginning of relationship, the relationship I have now with my now grown children. Right. And, and, you know, similarly, I mean, that's, that's, it's easy to say, well, of course, mom is the nourishing mother, the alma mater, by the way, do you know, that's the Latin term nourishing mother, but you are the, you're the nourish, the source of all the nourishment and so much of that comfort. It's easy for fathers to feel like, well, you know, when they're, when they're weaned and they're potty trained, then I can start to have a role in their life. But I have a, I have a role in our baby's life too. Absolutely. And, you know, I think about the times that I was so tired and we had a fussing child. And I remember you, Hal, standing up in the hall at the top of the stairs and you were you were singing to one of our babies, having mm -hmm. tucked up under your, your chin, you're singing your deep, deep voice mm -hmm. and calm that baby right down. And I thought that grew trust between you and the baby and between you and me too. And, you know, it, it, it bred affection and love in my heart that you're taking care of both the baby and me. You know, and I think that's the fundamental relationship that you're establishing in those early years is that it's one of the reasons that we didn't, we didn't believe in that cry it out theory of parenting with, right. with little ones. You say, you know what, right now we believe they need protection, nourishment, comfort. Well, you know, the Lord says, come unto me, mm -hmm. you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He doesn't say, suck it up. Right. You know? <laughs> he right. doesn't say, learn to self-soothe. He says, yep. come to me. And so, you know, you begin even then, but then as you move into toddlerhood and the preschool years, and discipline has to enter the picture. How you discipline makes a difference to your relationship. You know, are you disciplining out of your frustration and anger and losing your temper? Or are you being judicial? Are you always, all of your discipline should point your kids to the gospel. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're sinners. Right. This is the law and you broke it and we're, we're sinners. And we're in need of a savior we're, and, and God will correct us to show us that we're sinners. And so we correct you to show you that there's right and there's wrong and that, that you're a sinner. You realize in the book of Hebrews, it says that, that a child who does not receive correction, it has been basically disowned by his father. Yes. You know, it talks about as we receive correction from our heavenly father, you know, it points out that, if you didn't receive correction, then your father had basically abandoned you. Well, think about it. If we're out in public and we're in a museum and we see a child acting up, we don't grab that child and say, you know, you're in trouble. You were doing wrong and here's your punishment because that's not my child. Right. But when it's my child, mm -hmm. I have a responsibility and a duty and I do it out of love because mm -hmm. I want my child to turn out to be a good person. I want them to be have good character. Right. And ultimately, I want them to know that there's right and that there's wrong and that they are born in sin and they can't help but choose wrong, but that God has made a way for them to be saved, that God's grace provides an answer. Mm -hmm. And so in those early, those early years, there's even the preschool years, I would say, yes. you know, you move from purely providing that assurance that, you know, your parents are going to be here. Your parents will take care of you. You're now moving into that instructive phase yes. to say, you know, I'm going to put the boundaries around you. I'm going to show you my love by training you, by yes. teaching you, by discipling you 
and disciplining you, even though at that point there's not a lot of um, there's not a lot of propositional truth that you're trying to get across. No, the truths are really limits, simple. There's boundaries. You know, you know um, there's a God. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. there's a savior. There's real. It's really simple. Yeah. But in that, we teach them really important truths, and I think that we've got to remember that God calls Himself a Father, mm -hmm. and so our parenting should remind our kids of the nature of God. You know that mm -hmm. that we should be just and merciful. That we should be loving and kind like our heavenly father. Right. And that's why you just can't let go and you can't lose your filters and lose your temper. And sometimes you'll do it, but you need to repent when you do. You right. right. Okay. Um, so, so that gets us up, that gets us through the, the toddler preschooler stage. But, but, you know, but there's yeah. other parts that during that stage, you need to be, you need to be spending time holding them and reading aloud. You need to be listening to their little silliness. Sometimes it seems pointless. You think, "Oh, he's just pretending," but but you're you're tying heartstrings. You're 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 saying, "I love you as a person." When you listen to their to their stories, you know. Now, and, and that is a really important thing because I think sometimes some parents get really wrapped up into the child training aspect of teaching certain behaviors. Yeah, and if they're not careful then their relationship with their child becomes a matter of um, do this or else. I'm the enforcer, the drill yeah. sergeant. Yeah. And, and, and they don't, and they don't get the, the love expressed in a way that they can feel, you know, okay. it's easy. You can look back, you know what your, your eight year old is never going to say, thank you for teaching me spelling. <laughs> but you know, all of our kids, when they've gone off to college, they've called back in the first months and on campus saying, thank you so much for the education you gave me. Yes. You know, because they can appreciate it then as an adult, which they can't when they're young. And your little one is not going to thank you for that correction, even though that is coming from love. What they will, though, what they will feel is when they feel your arms about them, when they feel that comfort expressed again, your appreciation and affection expressed toward them in a way that that is just warm and fuzzy and not at all sharp edged. Let me give you a truism. You will never spoil a child with too much love. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. You spoil children with too little discipline. And too much right. love has never spoiled a child. Bringing your baby bed with you has never spoiled a child. You know, going mm -hmm. to them when they're crying has never spoiled a child. What spoils a child is failing to, to teach them right from wrong, mm -hmm. failing to hold them accountable for their sin. You know, I, I'm, I'm just thinking too, um, there's a passage that comes to mind really just off the top right here in Genesis where um, where Jacob is returning home after his long sojourn. Now he's married, he's married and married, 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 and he has lots of kids and he's coming home and his brother Esau says, well, here, let's travel together. And Jacob says, no, you're going to move too fast and the young ones cannot keep up. You know, he, yeah. he says, he says it'll it'll harm the flocks and the pregnant the pregnant sheep won't be able to stand it and the children are not able to keep up. So he he sees children need some consideration, children need some allowances. We have to give them the 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 right to be children, weak, you know, uncertain, needing guidance, needing lots of consideration. Now please understand, we're not saying you have to you have to manage your home a certain way. No, no, you know, no. It, it's a matter of Christian liberty where your children sleep or how or whatever, but what, but your parenting needs to be marked with kindness, with kindness and with love and with a real interest in your, in your little people as people. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and interest in them because when you, when you do that, even up through the elementary years, when you're listening to them, when they're talking, when you're, gathering around and reading them stories when you're giving them the discipline they need without anger and hostility but instead you know what when it's over loving them and, and welcoming them back into the family fellowship with utter forgiveness like god forgives us wow you know then then our parenting reflects the gospel and that's the goal